your history is very long with it. So you started with Taika uh, on the original on the film, and then ten years later, thirty episodes of of, of editing and, and seventeen is it directing? Um, I mean, you are in the blood of of what we do in the shadows. What does it mean to you to, you to be in a, a series that's carried on this long? It's you know it's almost a decade later. Um. It's, I mean, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to be working with such talented, kind, brilliant people on something that I genuinely love. But it's also strange because when we did the feature, it was such a small kind of thing we were doing on our free time. <laughs> like, um, you know, Ty and Jermaine came here to my back house studio to, to work on it. Um, it was just, it was a, a little labor of love and kind of a lark. And I don't think any of us expected it to do as well as it did um, or to become a show or to 10 years later, it'd still be spending so much of my life on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, um, but I love it. I'm so grateful. Um, yeah, but it is a little strange. I will say yeah. that. <laughs> it, it's, I mean, after seeing the film, you hear about the series and my, my, you know, grouchy old man reaction is don't do this don't ruin something that we had we had something good we don't have to always tamper with it and then I watched it and I instantly fell in love and I was so happy that because it didn't it didn't pull punches it didn't try um too hard to connect itself to it it just said this is what we're going to be and let itself form and let you kind of engage with it in, in a way that even if you don't know this the film that anyone can uh, appreciate and I mean, like I said, I, I look at this, I'm like, it's such a it's such a fun show, so clever, so dense in in, uh, in the humor, but also the character development is, is wonderful. So uh, I don't know what my point was other than I, I like the show. Uh, well, I mean, all credit to the cast there and I think uh, to the writers mm -hmm. as well. Um, and Paul Sims, um, who leads that team, because on the feature, um, they had a script, but they didn't show it to anybody. And so we had 300 hours of improv to try and make a movie out of. And, you know, a TV schedule does not um, permit for that kind of filmmaking. I, I mean, mm -hmm. it'd be marvelous if it did, but it, I, I, I don't know of a show that's made that way. Um, <laughs> so, um, so we have the benefit of fantastic writers and and an all new cast who brought completely different characters and world building um and I think is what Taika and Jermaine were actually approached to revisit their characters to do the television show and they just thought that would be really like retreading and not interesting um and also they didn't enjoy being in all that makeup and prosthetics for so long. <laughs> but, um, uh, so they really wanted to pass the torch, but mostly because they thought creatively that that would be a really boring thing. Like, why would you want to watch more of, I mean, they had another 280 hours of it. Like we could have, we could have made a show, I guess, but it would have been more of the same. So um, yeah, they were, they knew they wanted to, if they were going to do it, that it had to be an all new world. And, and looking back at your, you know, kind of your beginnings, you started in documentary. Is that, and then somehow it led you here. Was the comedy and, you know, this type of, uh, of series always in you, or is it something that, uh, that kind of happened organically? Um, I think this is very much my sense of humor uh, and my tone, and that is why Taika and I work together and we're drawn to each other as filmmakers. I worked on his very first movie mm -hmm. uh, because tonally I was already in that um, world and wheelhouse. I love deadpan. Um, I'm Russian. I have this very overdeveloped sense of deadpan and <laughs> So oh, um, his timing is my timing and uh, his tone is my tone. And that's why we work together. Um, and I think that's why I'm able to do the show uh, because I speak the same language. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, because yeah, it's, you can't fake a sense of humor, you know, and you're having somebody who, who kind of, you know, like you said, speaks the same language comedically. You look at the script and are probably cracking up or someone else might look at it and go, where's the what's the joke here you know or how do we play this out so it's a it's a good head start and it explains your your long collaboration 
Um, and then you were nominated for for Go Flip Yourself this season, which, you know, of course has these documentary type elements to it. And then and, uh, this up or this new season, you did the local news. So what goes into the making of these meta episodes that, you know, to capture uh, the specifics of that genre or those genres? Um, well, I um, am very, um, I pay attention to the details. I, I don't like it when fictional television aims for something else and, and misses. Um, so we do a tremendous amount of research and every department does to get all of the beats of that right. So on Go Flip Yourself, um, well, I was already in love with reality television and had been watching a lot of it, especially during the pandemic. Um, so that was easy. <laughs> like immediately when I heard we were doing a meta episode that was going to be a in like an HGTV show, I was like, please let me do that. Um, so, but I have a lot of friends who work in reality television and I called all of them up and was like, how do you shoot this? Like, what kind of lighting kit are you carrying? I, I connected them with my DP. I gave him episodes to watch. Dave McMaster, with whom I edited this episode and I'm nominated with, is brilliant and also a fan of reality TV. So uh, so he went and watched a bunch of stuff and like started a Bible of um, the toolkit of reality TV editing so that we could hit all the tropes of, you know, speed ramps and slow motion and the dissolves. And, you know, he came up with the, the idea of using, you know, black and white flashbacks and um, these artificial slow motions to hit beats, um, which are so fun. And we always would like, would love to have in our regular toolkit and, and unfortunately cannot. Um, so yeah, it was just a tremendous amount of research and then reaching out to like the actual people that make these things. We, we went to the property brothers, Nizo, the house that does their graphics, to create the mansion stuff. And um, we found the um, voiceover artist from Love It or List It to, to do the VO. Like we just wanted to do it right. Like we didn't want to make fun of reality TV. We wanted to mm. make a really good reality television show um, to the best of our ability in, in our sketch, like create an entirely new show. Um, and it was Herculean and the music, like the research that we did on the music um, was, we spent all of our free time just in music libraries. So that was a lot and wonderful. And I felt really happy with um, all my friends who I had interviewed about real working in reality TV were like, you, you know, if you want to come work at HGTV, <laughs> like, you have, you can. And so with local, t with local television, with local news, uh, we took a similar approach, but news people are kind of harder to get to because there's a lot of security around news and um, a lot of concern about hacking and, you know, potentials for violence actually against news. Um, so the walls are pretty high up, like you can't just call people, but I had, a you know, some connections again, um, and um, we spoke to a lot of people on news, we had a lot of consultants, um, and we sat a cameraman down who was a friend of mine's father, uh, with our DP and and we were like, um, you know, we started slow, like, <laughs> you know, how, you know, what are your frame rates? What you know, uh, what? How would you move the camera? What would you zoom in on? What would you? All of those questions. Um, and then we were like, so if your um, satellite van got bombed, <laughs> and it's face, like you just. <laughs> It was this moment of like, what did I get myself into? Who are these people? Wait, like, how do you know my daughter? Like, it was like um, are, is this okay? Like, what am I, um, what secrets am I divulging? Am I helping a terror, uh, like a domestic terrorist cell work their <laughs> terrible magic? Um, yeah, who's tracking anyway. you now after these questions? <laughs> I know. So, what government agency is that like, you know, outside your door? You know, my search histories, Jesus. <laughs> um like when I'm looking for paintings of oh yeah no I'm sure I'm on a list <laughs> yeah, oh yeah well yeah your 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 art in this show I'm like where do they find this if somebody has this collection uh maybe put them in jail you know there's a I mean a lot of it is in my books here um I'm an art nerd but um oops uh, <laughs> yeah but also with the last comment no. we we <laughs> we hired um like our anchors were real people with local news credits and experience. Like we wanted it all to feel 
really real. It was, um, that's where a documentary, uh, the jokes work because, you know, we, we take big comedic swings and they only work because mm -hmm. we ground them in reality as much as we can otherwise. So. True. Yeah. That's something that for, for comedy that I, there's times I go, I see the joke there, but I don't, the joke doesn't land for me. It's not authentic. It doesn't have, you know, it's not based in something, you know, I'll, I'll, often with comics too, you say, or comedians, stand ups, you know, I, I know you're telling a story that's not real. So I'm not as ready to laugh. And with this series, you create a, a, this world that you, and you know, it doesn't exist, but yet it, it oftentimes feels like it. What would they do? What would their reactions be to it? And it doesn't go over the top. It kind of finds that, you know, that sweet spot. I, I always wonder like with this episode, I mean, I always see on television during the news, they pick that random person on the street to talk about some situation that's going on. And I th found that funny here that they, you know, they, and they often have like, the, least, <laughs> the least bit of insight. <laughs> <laughs> and this time that, that, that throwaway, that time, throwaway right? line <laughs> leads to death <laughs> and destruction. And I'm sorry, what did you say? I, missed I mean, they have to fill a lot of time. So, you know, yeah. neighborhood guy who was a live witness, I guess, would, would crack local news. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if anyone had turned on the Go Flip Yourself episode not knowing what it was and just was watching it as a... Uh, I hope so. You know, the the thing that Dane reality. and I are actually most proud of is that we created a fake television commercial for Go mm -hmm. Flip Yourself that we put into an earlier episode um, as a teaser for the Go Flip Yourself episode. And Hulu got like a tremendous amount of complaint calls for people that were playing paying for the no commercial tier. <laughs> and we were like yes <laughs> because, because uh you know they believed it they thought they were getting an ad for some show that they didn't want <laughs> so, yeah yeah man well you you nailed it though everything from i mean there's the, the way the camera moves the, the the overlays and 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 but each one of them are done just a lot of it was used for you know inject some of that comedy in there too which i is one of the things that you know i wanted to uh, touch upon is like every line, every scene, every cutaway, every reaction shot has a tinge of humor or is helping sell the joke. Uh, is it difficult for you as a director and, and editor to find that balance where you're, you know, you need to be to, to help the narrative and move it along, but at the same time, you're, you're trying to land these jokes. You want people to laugh. That's, you know, so you have two main goals. Is it tough to find that balance? Um, well, that's the guiding principle is be funny, you know, so that's ultimately what wins. I, I mean, in our show, um, we have incredibly funny scripts. We have incredibly funny actors who do wonderful improv. Um, and so as editors, when, when I'm in the editorial chair, we are trying every piece of improv and every piece of scripted material and judging what makes us laugh, which is such a, you know, that's taste. That's um, mm -hmm. and thankfully, um, Dane and I and the rest of the editorial team who are wonderful um, have a very similar sensibility to our writers and to our producers. Um, so all of that kind of matches up into this alchemy. But if we didn't have a similar sense, of, I mean, there are, there's a much less um, I want to say grounded version of the show that I personally would not find funny, um, but that might delight. A completely different kind of audience um so that's that's taste that's um yeah comedic preferences yeah yeah and the <laughs> thing i mean I, I mean i i know who i recommend this to i wouldn't recommend it to my brother uh he wouldn't like it but i have friends who i do and i and and, and i've been batting a thousand because i know but, you know the, I, I would say like the, the thing that um every single department on this show is so stellar and brings so much creativity and humor and care to their work that we get these wonderful scripts and then every department is thinking how can I top it how can I make this funnier what can what's the visual flourish it's like a Fabergé egg like every little piece of it costumes production design props casting like you know they all sound we're all thinking of 
what's the gag? What's the gag on the gag on the gag on the gag mm-hmm. on the gag? And um and layering it. So hopefully it's a show that survives well on a second watch because there are, I hope there are things that you didn't catch um the first time through that will just be an Easter egg for you um and that you can enjoy on a second viewing. Oh yeah, that's definitely the case. I mean, I've gone back <laughs> and and like I like I said, I I laugh. I, I often don't re-laugh, uh, but this show nails it and then I often find so many different uh you know little treats in there. Here they you know sometimes it, it's if you take your eye off where the camera wants you to look and, and you look in the background, you you catch a you know Colin Robinson's one of them, his his uh his feeding face, uh, I swear, just seeing him in the background at a at a uh, city meeting has me on the floor. He's marvelous. Yeah. How how many gems do you have to leave on the cutting room floor? You know, I'm oh, sure I, that is by far the most painful part of making this show, I would say, is that um, you know, our scripts are long, our improv is long. <laughs> Like there is, there is so much wonderful material that we aren't able to include, which is a gift um, and better than the opposite. But there's a lot of really painful cuts um, that we have to make in order to get it to kind of a digestible length. And and that was true in the movie also. And what we found was that um, Yes, there were many very, very funny things that we didn't include, but putting a cherry on a cherry on a cherry on a cherry doesn't make the cherry more delicious. So, you know, you you do have to boil it down to make what's left its funniest. Um, so those painful cuts are, are worthwhile and necessary, even though they hurt. Did you ever consider like a, uh, a clip show? I think they used to do those in the 80s and 90s where they'll be sitting around a table talking like, remember the time and you show like you some of those uh, that you had to dispose of well no spoilers but um anyway uh, <laughs> okay well, I, I, that's, a, that's a good answer no spoilers that <laughs> sells a hell of a lot um and as a your first episode as director is one of my favorite pieces of tv ever on the run uh the whole jackie daytona thing it's a masterpiece um, I mean, there's so much about it that I love. You know, Mark Hamill, uh, Mark Hamill playing uh, a character. Like, I, it's been a while. I, th- I think it's the first time I'd seen him in live action in, in for a long time. I know he did voice work on, on animated shows. But to see him uh, just go all in, I'm like, it, it, it proves to you what the caliber of the show that you're working with. But my point was what I want to get into is what I love. One thing I love about it is it all comes down to like a Muppet show, little rascals type. We have to save the bar uh, where we have to save the volleyball team. But that's Stephanie show. Robinson. That's she, that's her script. She's wonderful. She also wrote the wellness center, um, which was another delightful experience for me as a, as a director. Um, she builds very good houses. So um, that was it was wonderful to come play in her house and, and, and to, to be able to build off of, again, that thing that shadows does, which is here's this wonderful thing. How can we make it better in every single moment? Like, you know, what can we try? What can we layer? Um, And that was very much true. And Mark um, was a fan of the show, which is how we ended up getting him. Like he was tweeting about it. And so we were like, do you, do you want to be on? And he was like, yes, absolutely. And he was so game and um Mm -hmm. and at some point like we had very carefully um orchestrated the fight scene in this bar because we had such a limited amount of time to shoot it and uh we had choreographed that moment with the pool cues where we hit this like luke skywalker (laughs) all that um and you know, I'm just taking them through the blocking and I was like and I was hoping you know we could try this thing and he was like for this show okay like normally no (laughs) uh bless him yeah bless him and then Barry was like the biggest Star Wars fan ever and so he was just like couldn't contain himself he was absolutely giggling holding that pool cue (laughs) so well what is it like stepping into the director's chair for this series that first time because it was you know a, a season and a half in it wasn't you know season one and 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 also the the fan reaction because I mean I 
a lot of people that's their favorite that's their favorite episode um it was wonderful um because you know I've been living with it for a season and I the awkward part for me was I felt like I knew all of them because I'd spent all this time in the editing chair and so I was just like hi <laughs> you know like I was so enthusiastic and um delighted to be working with them in person but none of them really knew who I was they'd seen me in post a little bit in ADR um but they didn't have the relationship with me that I had with them mm -hmm. um and it took them a minute to go like who is this very enthusiastic woman <laughs> <You're> <laughs> that's like in their in their space but um they they liked me they they warmed up to me thank, thank goodness yeah then you know this season they you know, we're throwing a lot at us uh, as a viewer there's uh we're going to space there are trips to the mall the beach the news again, uh, Guillermo, Guillermo frogs. Um, there's more Guillermo creatures coming up, um, which I think by the time this airs or, or runs, we'll have seen. If not, I'll bleep it out. Um, but not only do these provide like moments for, for comedy, it's also, you know, you prov also um, creates new challenges for you as an, as an editor and director. Uh, what is it? What was it like this season? You know, there's a lot, in in the first four episodes alone, there's so much to to cover that you can't. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure every episode has its own list of challenges. Can you cover in a kind of general thing uh, some of the biggest challenges this year? Um, I think local news as as an episode. Just whenever we do a new format, that that's that that's a challenge because you're basically making an entirely new show and figuring out the language of a new show. Um, so that was a bite but I love format and you know coming from editorial that's that's a passion for me so like figuring out you know what frame rate do we need to shoot this at that mm -hmm. really tickles me um uh, my nerd brain just goes Ding. so <laughs> um that that and then something we do we have an incredible stunt team um that Teague Fong and um Jeff LaChapelle um God, I hope I pronounce his name right. Anyway, take that bit out. <laughs> uh, anyway, we have this incredible stunt team. Um, and they, um, we always have conversations about how not to repeat ourselves, how how to make a fight feel different um, and to do a new kind of gag and a new kind of joke. And we're always trying to sort of top it or um, think of some fresh way that vampires can fight and to work with the environment that we're given to do something different. Um, so that's always part of the conversation. And then, um, you know, with urgent care, there, we have this trope of the, you know, vampires kind of get stuck in the era that they were turned. Um, and uh, Laura Montgomery, our costume designer, like pitched these late 1930s, early 1940s, like Nazi sympathizers, <laughs> like um, costume thing that really sort of took that space and, and that design into a really interesting, cr super creepy um, vein. Um, so like figuring out the design of new spaces uh, and how it might be special, uh, and vampiric or or mundane you know if we're in a mall and like you know going through that space and as soon as like we were shooting the mall and in that mall they had that um merry-go-round and I saw that and I went to the writers and I went we have to put Nandor on a horse like <laughs> you know like this is <laughs> so that those are the kind of like little cherry toppers that we're always looking for in our environments and our locations. Like, how can we use this to tell our story in the funniest way possible? And then you said there's a lot of improv. Um, you know, the Matt Berry line reads alone are uh, a thing of legend at this point. What is it like directing that? Is it does it make it tougher for you? Is it easy? You know, does is uh, does he stick? You know, do you have to rein him in, or do you let him just kind of do his thing? I mean, the hardest part is not laughing. The hard and and I'm not always good at that. <laughs> I, I have ever ruined a take. Um, 
yeah I, I try and save it up and and laugh at the end we um have an ethos on our show that we will always do at least the scripted version because oftentimes that is the funniest way um of telling a you know and I think probably most of the things that you love about the show came from actual written <laughs> material mm -hmm. um but we have this gift of incredible improvisers and to rein them in would be a crime. Um, so once we feel like we have a solid take on the scripted version, they're set free. And um, we do something that's called like a fun run, uh, almost always given time uh, where they can do whatever they want. And um, oftentimes that's extremely funny and yields the version. And um, oftentimes it's, a total shit show and we <laughs> <laughs> and we just went like well okay well I guess we did that like let's 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 move on but you know we have the safety net of we got the scripted version it's gonna be okay <laughs> like it, yeah um but Matt um Matt I you know I honestly don't think he's ever said a line the exact same way <laughs> twice like no, like his brain just doesn't, he's not wired that way. And that, that's a gift um, on a show like ours. It's an absolute gift. Um, yeah. And they're all uh, fantastic in that way. They're all so quick and um, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I pointed out Matt, but I, I know there, there's some great improv uh, talent there because I, I have seen Mark do his yo-yo man, which I think is one of the funniest things ever. Mark's another one that will almost never give you the same line. <laughs> like he, his brain, he's just cooking up like new and new and new um, takes on gags. Yeah. Uh, I could talk to, talk to you all day about this. I have a thousand more questions uh, on my list. Unfortunately, I have to wrap this up. But I read you're a big Buffy the Vampire, uh, Vampire Slayer fan. Same here. My, my daughter uh, is actually named Cordelia. Oh, and yes um you got you got to work or edit the the late great unfortunately uh paul rubens is there any chance of another buffy crossover happening on the series i uh, i mean the only problem is that i might geek out so hard that it would be hard to do my job um <laughs> uh yeah i i desperately hope so i um we don't have one not this season but um you know season six maybe I don't know. Nothing's been cast yet. So mm -hmm. um, it's always my my hope. I'm always hoping. I love that cast. And um, yeah, it's embarrassing how many times I've watched that show. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we're just starting it now. My daughters are at the age now ready to watch it. So we yeah, literally just started it a few days ago. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And do you have a character that you would you would uh, choose though? Spike, oh. Aunt, Anya, Buffy, Giles, Oz? <laughs> Oh, Oz, maybe. Um, I do love Spike, but I hear that he's not wanting to. Or Angel. Uh, uh, they're, all, they're all so good. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I really do appreciate it. And I look forward to more. It's, uh, thank you. Best of luck at, with, with the Emmys. Thank you.